Village of Bartlett Board Meeting for July 16, 2024. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Einstein? Here. Hopkins? Here. Report? Here. Sawanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. We've requested Father Chris Chomek of St. Peter Damian Catholic Church to do our invocation. Thank you for being here, Father. Lord God, as you gather us this evening, we praise you and thank you for all your graces, all the good that is in our life. Help us always to recognize it and appreciate it and be thankful for it. And we humbly pray, may your blessing come upon us. Bless each and every one of us. Bless this meeting. Bless those who govern us in Bartlett. We also ask for your protection upon everyone in Bartlett in a special way, protect our police officers, firemen, first responders. Bless everyone here who is going to dialogue, who is going to uh, have conversations with your wisdom, dear God, with uh, right judgment. We also, dear God, as we gather to this evening, we pray for your peace. We pray for God's peace within our hearts, in Bartlett, in our nation, and the whole world. And together, let us pray with the prayer Jesus Christ himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May God bless us, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Brings us to our consent agenda this evening. All items listed with an asterisk will be enacted in one motion. There'll be no separate discussion on items on the consent agenda. That being said, would anybody like to add or remove anything from the consent? Could I add item D3 to the consent agenda tonight? I think we talked about noise limitations enough. If so. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I would like to add A1 and 2, but I want to know we don't have to. No, I would write, just have a discussion. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right, so I will in, uh, let's see here. request uh, a um, motion to amend the consent agenda this evening, which will be including the minutes from committee July 2nd, 2024, board July 2nd, 2024, the bills list from July 16, 2024, the consent this evening will also be including items D1, 2, and adding item 3 under License and Ordinance Committee. The <coughs> consent this evening will also include items E1 under Pu Police and Health Committee. The consent this evening will also include items F1 and 2 under Public Works and Golf Committee. So moved. Second. <coughs> by Trustee Daney, second by Trustee Laporte. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. Daney? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. A motion carries. Entertain a motion to approve the amended consent agenda. So moved. Second. By Trustee Daney. Second by Trustee Laporte. Will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, Trustee Laporte? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. Daney? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. A motion carries. Next on our agenda this evening is the Treasurer's Report. Mr. Treasurer? Thank you. Included in the uh, board packets for this evening is the Treasurer's Report for the month of May. Also included is the sales tax re report. We received $296,621 this month. That was 40,000 more than last year. Uh, we had been down the last couple of months before. Uh, could be a uh, catch up from that or it could be uh, we're having our new grocery store and our um, auto dealership starting to uh, receive the sales tax. For our motor fuel tax, we received $143,652, just about consistent with the previous months. As far as the um, local government distributive fund, we received $1,100,000 in 
In the month of May, uh, that's still at the 6.47%. Uh, no changes were made for uh, the, the, the budget year going forward. So that's it for the Treasurer's report, unless there's any questions. Okay, now we'll move on to the President's report. We have some special guests this evening for National Night Out. Um, and I will read the National Night Out proclamation. Proclamation National Night Out 2024, Tuesday, August 6, 2024. Whereas the National Association of Town Watch is sponsoring a unique nationwide crime, drug, and violence prevention program on Tuesday, August 6, 2024, entitled National Night Out. And whereas the 41st annual National Night Out provides an exceptional opportunity for Bartlett, Illinois, to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community prime, crime prevention efforts. And whereas the village of Bartlett plays a vital role in assisting Bartlett Police Department through joint crime, drug, and violence prevention efforts in Bartlett, Illinois, and has supported National Night Out locally since 1993. And whereas it is essential for essential all citizens of the village of Bartlett be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and understand the impact their participation may have on reducing crime, drugs, and violence in Bartlett, Illinois. And whereas Police community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness, and cooperation are essential themes of the National Night Out program. Now, therefore, I, Village President Kevin Wallace, do hereby call upon all citizens of Bartlett, Illinois, to join the Village of Bartlett and the National Association of Town Watch in supporting the 41st annual National Night Out on Tuesday, August 6, 2024. Further, let it be resolved that I, Village President Kevin Wallace, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August 6, 2024, as National Night Out in Bartlett, Illinois. Yay! Mayor, right, they want to say thank you to you and obviously our village board here. I want to thank our uh, administration, both on the village and police department, for your continued support every year that we do these programs. Um, just want to touch base on August 2nd, we have our family fun night and twilight pool party. Um, that starts at 5 p.m. It's going to be down at the Barley Community Center. Um, August 3rd, we have our block parties and lighting competition. That's kind of the staple of National Night Out. We always look forward to all the block parties and what the residents put out. Um, on August 4th, we have our putt, chip, and drive crime out of uh, golf event. That's going to be at Barlett Hills. That starts at 1 p.m. And obviously, we're going to conclude with our National Night Out picnic in the park on August 6th, as you elaborated. And we couldn't do it without any of you. So thank you again. Thank you. How, many, how many block parties do we have? 14 right now. 14 wow. block 14. parties. All right. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Come up here. We can ask. Yeah. Next item I have is a proclamation recognizing Code Enforcement Officer Susan Duchesne upon her retirement from the Village of Bartlett. Whereas after working at Hanover Park for three years, Susan Duchesne, come to her sense, no, that's not what it says, was hired and as a Code <laughs> officer, uh, Enforcement Officer for the Village of Bartlett in August of 1997. Wow. And whereas during the, her tenure with the Village, Susan earned certifi certifications with International Co uh, Code Council and the American Association of Code Enforcement as a property maintenance and housing inspector, a code official safety specialist, and also was elected to serve as secretary of the Illinois Association of Code Enforcement from 2013 to 2015. And whereas her professional cr credentials attest to Susan's extensive knowledge and proficiency for enforcing the maintenance standards and conditions of all properties, buildings, and structures in our municipality, and her expert ability to ensure that the village structures are safe, sanitary, and fit for occupation. And whereas when Bartlett experienced a major storm event and widespread flooding in September of 2008, Susan assisted with flood assessment damage reports, and the aftermath was a key representative for her department in emergency services disaster tabletop training exercises 
and the Operation Safe School Training Exercise. And whereas it was Susan who was tasked with presenting the village's first code enforcement case at a local adjudication hearing in 2015. Previously, all cases were heard at Cook County Housing Court. And whereas the village is forever appreciative that Susan made the investigation of code complaints, the enforcement of village ordinances, and protecting the integrity of our community's public health, safety, and welfare, her full-time job for 27 years. Now, therefore, I, Kevin Wallace, President of the Village of Bartlett, Cook, DuPage, and King Counties, offer our many thanks to Code Enforcement Officer Susan Duchesne for her years of service. We are proud to have had you as an employee in the Village of Bartlett, and we wish you a retirement free from worries about overgrown yards and rogue business signages, and filled instead with many years of family fun, good health, and much happiness. Dated the 16th day of July, 2024. Congratulations. <laughs> You better shut your phone off, though. I have a feeling you'll be getting a lot of calls. <laughs> Change your number. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for staff? I do. I have a couple of things. All right, I'm sure you do. Yes. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize the uh, anniversary list for our commissioners. And uh, we really appreciate the efforts that they put forth in serving our, our community. Uh, George Cozio has uh, 21 years of service on the Planning and Zoning Committee. And on the Police and Pension Board, we have John Sias and Dan Palmer, both with seven years. So congratulations, guys, and thank you for everything you're doing to help the village. And then I just want to have a shout out for our Bartlett Police Department for the efforts that they put forth in the little altercation that we had on July 4th. Uh, during July 4th. Thank you so very much. And my understanding is no one was hurt at that, which is really, really appreciated. And then I'd like to shout out to Public Works uh, for their response with the, the nice weather we've had over the next, last week. Uh, I understand that you had to call people in at uh, all hours of the night to uh, just participate and try and keep the community safe and operating. So guys, the anniversaries and shout out to the Police Department Public Works. Thank you very much. And Dan is speaking at the Rotary meeting this Thursday, isn't he? Yes. I'd also like to add uh, thank you to all the volunteers for the 4th of July. They put on a, the 4th of July fest and, and the Lions Club for putting on a great parade. I felt that this fest was probably one of our best ones yet. The weather was fairly cooperative. And I also want to extend a, a, a huge thank you to our police department. Um, the response to that scuffle was unbelievable. And uh, when you walk out and you see police cars from every village, as far as the eye can see down the street, uh, you know that the Bartlett Police Department has the respect that they deserve and need to get things done. So well done. And it makes me feel safe living in Bartlett. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, let's, you know what, that deserves a round of applause also. project It's going good until this weekend. <laughs> yes. Um, make sure I pull up. Um, they're moving east now. Um, the plan is to hopefully be done with all the water main before school starts. Um, and right now, weather permitting, um, it looks like we're going to be real close to having 
the main wall should all be in. They might be working on final restoration type stuff, um, but they're moving along. We are working on improving our communications, making sure that we're uh, working with the contractor. They had multiple crews coming in, which was kind of where, where we got out of whack and we were starting to get calls. Um, but I think we've worked that out. So we'll do a, uh, they're gonna do a daily update providing us of what section they plan to be on and what will be detoured um, during that stretch. Um, but it's moving along pretty well, so. After that project, do they plan on <clears throat> repaving Ward Avenue in Oak? Yeah, so right now they'll do the patching that they've got, but we've got STP funding for, we've got STP funding for North for next year, so North would get totally repaved. We're trying to get Oak on that same program. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it's gonna be in 2025. It may, right now they're saying it's out even 26, 27. Um, but we're trying to show that, hey, we got everything ready to go. Um, it makes sense to do it at the same time. We'll see how that goes, but uh, that's what we're trying to get them both done next year if we can. <clears throat> And we had someone reach out online that they were unaware of like what was going on and I've had a few people ask us, so what are we changing or how, do, how are we gonna reach out to the residents or businesses? It's on the website and we'll be using the social media to get the word out. Um, we also have some of the signage we're changing to make sure it's up to date, um, but mainly through the website and social media blasts. Is there something like if, if we have enough time, like we send it like it through the email or the app or something? Um, I, I don't know if we have everybody's like emails. On social media, like if it's not. We could do we could do Bartlett Connect, but if I am not mistaken, I believe they're door knock, door, door knock as well. We'll do a door if, if for the residents where we're doing service work or adjacent, if we're block, you know, going through a driveway, they actually knock on the door and talk to them or do a door hanger, uh, letting them know that their driveway will be blocked the day, you know, the next day, that type of thing. So there's more contact, you know, person to person contact along the route, but as far as general, like trying, like people trying to get through downtown, giving them aware, awareness, that's more social media, the website, that type of stuff. I have a question. Uh, southbound on Oak, the stoplight uh, between JC's and Associated Bank, there is a, li a lane that goes northbound and then there's two lanes that go southbound. Is the southbound center lane, I guess, a turn lane only? And then the next lane, the lane closest to the bank is a southbound lane? Because I've seen cars go in the turn lane and then they speed up and cut in front of everybody to cross the tracks. So I. When we blacktop it, can we stripe it accordingly? It'll all get, yes, it'll all be before even, uh, it'll be striped later this summer. Once they get all the, you know, touch up patching and all that stuff done, Oak will be restriped from the tracks all the way up to Lake Street. Awesome. So that turn lane will get clarified. It is a left turn lane going southbound onto Bartlett. It's not a left turn lane to go all the way down the railroad. And it's, uh, I think, I believe south of that intersection, it's a yellow crosshatch to let people know that this is not a turn lane. So once we get it restriped, hopefully it'll be more I've clear. seen it twice, just sitting there. I've seen it, witnessed it twice. And I'm like, I, I'm like, it was the guy drunk. What's he doing? It's just, it was, well, I've seen it more than that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Dan and I. You haven't gotten caught yet, Joe? Uh, I'm too busy texting, so I don't see anything. <laughs> anything else? All right. A shout out to Tyler. I called Public Works on Sunday. The retention pond uh, on Hillcrest and Berteau was full to the point that the sewers were backing up and the parking lots at Hillcrest were three inches deep. And uh, I knew there was nothing he could do it on Sunday. He got the message Monday morning. Those guys were out there at 7 o'clock in, in hip waders. I saw the picture, yeah. The and uh, I got a picture, I sent it to Tyler today, of the empty. I mean, it emptied like that once they cleared it up. So thank you for, for shop backs are public great. works and Tyler. Yeah. Yeah, my shop back wouldn't have done it. <laughs> thank you. All right, is that it? Moving on to the town hall portion of the meeting. Uh, if anyone would like to address the board, kindly step up to the podium. Uh, try to keep your comments to three uh, minutes or less. And try to uh, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Diane Rocha. I live on 315 West North Avenue, where we have the tree down in the utility pole right now. Comet is hopefully going to get us power back tomorrow. The reason I'm here is because of the noise ordinance. I don't know, I know we don't have one, and we really do need one in place. Uh, last weekend, I don't know where it was coming from. I thought maybe it was downtown. But our whole house was just shaking inside. And talking to another neighbor, I found out, um, if you guys are aware of the old church there on Western and North, the house next to it was having a party. And from what I spoke to my neighbor, she said they were peeing publicly in the street and on the grass. The, they had called the police department and complained. Several neighbors had gone over there and complained. And the police said that there was nothing they could do about it because we don't have a noise ordinance. But I mean, when you're in your bed and your whole body is vibrating because the bass is so loud, I mean, we shouldn't have to have to call the police. There should be something in place. So if we do, that they will do something because this went on until like midnight. I mean, and I mean, I'm in bed already and I didn't call because I had no idea where it was coming from. I thought, why are they doing it downtown? And that's something too, because we are close to downtown and we've been here probably close to 42 years, and we've never had all this noise before. I mean, you know the traffic's atrocious. Even with ComEd, we've had people at 3 o'clock in the morning yesterday trying to fly down our street. And the ComEd guy told me he had to turn on the lights, and the guy's like, I'm trying to get through. And he goes, well, if you insist, go ahead. And then the guy goes, oh, I can't get through. He goes, that's why I'm here. So. I know I just wish you guys could do something, at least about the noise. Let's get a noise ordinance going. I know traffic-wise, I'm hoping once we get Bartlett and 59 open, maybe that alleviates some of our cut-through traffic. But I, I just wanted to bring that to your attention, and I wanted to make sure I could make that meeting to let you know that we're still thinking about that. And we know you guys and love the 4th of July fest. Love seeing your grandbabies, too, Brene. So I just want to thank you so much for all you are doing and listening to us, and hopefully we can get these issues up and get these resolved. Okay? Thank you, Diane. And don't hesitate to come back if it doesn't help the noise. I, I want to point out that we just passed a noise ordinance tonight. Oh, did you? Yes. We did. I think, I, I think the police department want, will explain it to them. I would think that. Thank you, Diane. I would think that public urination would be a wait, a reason to. Would anyone else like to address the board at this time? Chris, John, I mean, Chris is long gone. No, Mayor, we do not. All right, thanks, John. Yeah. Um, there's no one else. We we'll move on to the standing committee reports this evening. First standing committee report is under Building and Zoning Committee, Chairman Gunstein. Thank you, President Wallace. We're going to flip uh, one and two. We're going to start with item number two tonight. Um, it's the residents of Bartlett Station. It's the Second Amendment to the Amended Development Agreement. The village previously entered into a purchase and sales agreement and development agreement for the residents at Bartlett Station, a 90-unit apartment building development on the properly, property previously owned by the village. Both agreements have been amended several times, and the developer is requesting an additional amendment to allow the following changes. He's requesting to replace the construction management consultant with Donovan Consulting Group LLC or comparable company to the approve, to approval of the village. He's also requesting to eliminate the requirement that concrete foundation and plumbing contractors to be union. As part of this amendment, the developer will be required to fit, the, submit full revised architectural plans for the apartment development no later than September 30th, 2020. I also want to point out that as of today, he has, we have redone the amendment. So we are voting on a revised amendment, which has eliminated the non-union clause for the plumbing. So uh, with that, I move to approve resolution 2024-66. A resolution approving the second amendment to the amended development agreement between the village of Bartlett, Manny Rafinia, MMAJ LLC, and Blink Building LLC. I'll second that. Moved by uh, Trustee Gunstein, seconded by Trustee Daney. Is there any discussion? I have a quick question. When, it, when you talk about the consulting agreement, 
um, or comparable companies subject to approval of the village? What are the parameters that we use to approve that? We'd be looking with someone else who has experience building um, apartment complexes. So we're looking to make sure that they have experience from the ground up with the brand new construction. Okay. Within the past 10 years. And who makes that determination? It's something staff would be looking at as the resume. We could bring a copy of the resume to the board if, in the event that it changes from what was submitted. They have to have 10 years of experience per our, our development agreement. Yeah, we have that discretion. Yeah. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they did bring architectural <laughs> drawings in today. They submitted <coughs> plans just for the foundation. Foundation, yeah. Last night. So this is asking for the full spill of the revised plans by September 30th. But at least we're at baby steps. It's progress. There's one thing I saw, and I don't know whether it was in item A1 or 2. But it said that it shall, the developer shall give the village uh, progress updates. So, I mean, what does that mean? Like, if they don't perform or let's say they keep sending us, we haven't started, we haven't started. I mean, what's, what's the recourse? So, oh, Chris, if you'd like to. So I'm curious about the language. So our PUD ordinance allows us to have a hearing to revoke their approvals if the village deems the developers abandoned the project. So we have the right, the village board has the right to ask for progress reports. We thought we'd be proactive and ask for them up front on a monthly basis just because this project has been delayed. Yeah. Good. I have a question in the exhibit, exhibit A, where we, it's on page three trades or subcontractors on the project required to be paid not less than union wages. So the seven listed here are required to be paid less than union wages, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So I don't see electricians, I don't see roofing, oh I do see roofing, I don't see electricians here though, and does the parking lot fall under concrete or is that separate? So uh, the requirement to have certain contractors be union? Um, was part of the original development agreement approved by the board back in 2020. So these were the ones that were originally approved as non-union uh, or as union requirements. All of the other contractors outside of these can be non-union contractors. That's been part of the agreement since 2020. The change here is to take out foundation from that list. I, I believe that electrical and mechanical was originally in the original agreement as union. That was not part of the actual listing of the contractors in the original agreement. I have a problem with that. Do we have a copy of that? Yeah, I've got it right here. Okay. So this is the exhibit. And they list out each of the ones that are supposed to be union. And then they did say be determined in the near future for electrical landscaping. Okay. So I, I thought at one point we said it was the concrete that was non-union. That's the change now? that they're making now. So concrete's going to be union? No. No. Concrete's non-union, just the foundation? Precast concrete will still be required to be a union. The, uh, the paper sides of the buildings. Wages. So these are, are, these are the only ones that are required to be union, anything else. So what else is there? Electrical, what else? HVAC. Does the, um, is concrete, is the parking lot considered concrete work or is that a different? Paving. Pavement. Was, pavement, that's different. It was my understanding. So pavement's not, yeah. pavement and asphalt aren't, aren't union either. That was not part of the original development agreement, no. no. Under the terms, everyone is supposed to pay prevailing wages or be union, except for concrete. That was my understanding. That, was, that, was our, uh, that wasn't the original agreement in 2020. Well, we're not talking about 2020, we're talking about 2020. But all we've been doing is amending the original agreement all the way through this. I mean, he can show it to you on the original agreement if you want. Yeah. 
story. I guess I was under the impression that there I was, was just only looking, one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that was what I heard. That's what I heard right. also. One change. No, I guess I thought when we were talking about union, non-union, there's just the one non-union. Was that change at any point? No, the, the changes to the union and non reading has not been changed. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions or discussion? Can we add that in, or is that a different amendment to the original agreement? We'd have to go back and negotiate that amendment with the developer to revise this. I'm amendment. only asking because I think it was before my time, obviously, in 2020. But I, for some reason, I thought I read that all other trades were to remain union. So when I read all other trades, I assumed it was all of them. So um, it was it was verbal in one of the sessions that we had that I think we I kind of remember somebody saying, well, an electrical and everybody else will be union. Yes. OK. At the time. Is there anyone here to ask questions? Uh, yeah. That's what I heard. But we also, I think, in the last, I listened to the minutes, and I think everyone agreed on a March date, and now that date is something different. So it's like, I mean, I think we say stuff, and then it, it just it doesn't translate all the time. So it's definitely a work in progress all the way through. I mean, it's been in, in and out, in and out, in and out, and it's been a challenge for the, this board to try to navigate what's going on with the contract and the amendments to the contract. Um, we are, I think, to the point where he wants to break ground. Um, so it's the board's decision whether or not we pass this tonight and allow him to break ground, submit his plans, and allow him to or not. I just want to clarify on the March date. Um, the reason it went out to July is because our code allows for a year. Our code allows for a year from the day we closed, right? But he closed in May of 2023. It's a year from the day you get the PUD approvals, but because we were negotiating and we'd been amending the annexation agreement in good faith, those PUD amendments were assumed to be extended as well. Now that we're getting to, it's been a year since the closing, we wanted to make sure that this was in writing, that the PUD needs to be extended. We entered into a sales agreement in May of 2020 and then the board approved the plans in the late summer of 21. The date was amended in December of 21. It was amended again. This is the sales agreement. In February of 23, we closed in May of 2023. And in 2021, when we approved plans, the, the presentation, the, the petitioner said that he was planning to break ground in October of 2021. Everybody was pretty excited about that, okay. Um, he finally closed on this piece of property three years later in 2023. Construction was supposed to start in a year. Um, we conceded that date again. And then in March or April, he requested another <laughs> extension. We answered September of this year. Um, then he requested March of 2025. We conceded March of 2025, and now we're at July of 2025. 20. Is when, when he wants to break ground. No. Yes. I, uh, the, we defined the, work, the term commencement of construction in the ordinance. It means that he has to be building on the first floor. So it's not just that he can dig a foundation. He has to be going vertical by July of 2025. So he would have to start by March. Why wouldn't he start now? think you'd want the building up and making money on it he indicated to me today that he would like to begin as soon as possible which is why he wanted these agreements on the board tonight and with the approval of the development agreement 
um, extension, then we can start issuing permits when we're ready. Yeah, I, I, I just, those of you that don't know and the public, general public know what's happened with this project, it's, it's, a, it's a yin and a yang between the village and a developer who really has some legitimate reasons for the expenses caused by what has happened in supply chain and everything else. That was a two-year event. So let's not just put all these dates down and say that this guy is really not ambitious enough to do it. The supply chain was real. Yeah, the supply chain thing was real. Um, now, has it been challenging ever since then? Absolutely. So I think it's at the, at the stage now where um, we approve what's in front of us or we don't approve what's in front of us. And if we don't approve what's in front of us, it goes back to the original drawing board. Am I correct with that, Christy? We have to go back to the original drawing board if this doesn't get approved? don't ex extend the, ex the PUD approvals, then it, we would be starting all over. Yep. Can, can I ask a question, because it was before my time, or uh, right about that time. When you guys defined what trades were going to be union or non-union, who, who defined that? That was done as part of the negotiations in an email from their attorney. So their attorney had spe specified which specific trades would be union, and then there were several trades they listed as being undecided. And those are undecided? Yes. Or yes. contingent. So. It's just not back. What's that? It doesn't seem like it's all the way back, right? It would just, it sounds like the part we're having problem with is we all thought there was only one non-union. Correct. So how, how? It doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to say, here's what we thought, here's what we'd like. It's a different board than 2020. I, I'm not sure that it, I, not here, so. I, I guess it depends on whether or not you, you trust those that are inspecting what's being done and you, or you don't. That's what it kind of comes down to. Do you, do, you, do you trust the people that are inspecting the work being done or, or do you not trust those people? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it from a standpoint of if there is picketing going on, it's going to prolong the job. The residents over there are now going to take a project that's supposed to take a year. It's going to drag out for two years. Then he's going to say, well, I got some labor issues. You got to understand. You guys approved it being non union and union or prevailing wage. And now we have residents over there, and it's just a mess. So I look at it from a standpoint of, you know, I don't want this to drag on, and I don't want issues and it seems like it's going that way and to me and I have been definitely wrong before but my understanding was this was a prevailing wage job from the start and all trades were required to pay prevailing wages or be union that was my understanding and then he came back and I thought it was just the concrete so that was my understanding believe me we can pull maybe the recordings from executive sessions and listen to them maybe we can you know bottom of it, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I think recordings would probably go a long way. It's been back and forth a lot, that's for sure. But again, just so the board knows, the decision you're making tonight is to start from scratch again. Um, and I don't, uh, there's, there's been so many back and forths on this project, more than I've ever had in t 11 years. Um, some of them are understandable, some of them are, are very um, frustrating. So, that's what we have to decide. Yeah, well, I'd like to see this move forward also. And uh, the contractors that he's listed here, he's paying them prevailing wage, correct? The plumbers, sheet metal, roofing, sprinklers, alarms, right? Mm -hmm. You're required to, yeah. yes. Yeah. Right. So uh, by paying them prevailing wage, you know, he, why wouldn't he? He left off a lot of trades on there. Did I? No electricians. Okay, I see where you're coming from. I think it's probably the best interest of keeping this work that's already been done intact to table this and um, move it to another meeting versus just completely shut it down. We don't want to start from square one. Right. No, we don't. We just want to clarify, bring it back. Yep. Okay. 
So I need a motion to table. As a matter of fact, I'll make a motion that we table it. I'll second it. So it's a motion to be made by a Let's identify what we want to clarify. Trustee Daney to table. Yeah. I think we've got the gist of what needs to be discussed. I have a second by Trustee um, Gunstein. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Swanski? Yes. Daney? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. This uh, um, yes. items a, item A2 has officially been tabled. And we, Mr. President, I'd like to table A1. Should make a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny. Uh, seconded by Trustee Swanski to table items um, A1 in the Building and Zoning Committee, um, Standing Committee reports. The clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Swanski? Yes. Thank you, Mr. That President. That has been tabled. That's all I have tonight on building and zoning. We need to specify a meeting. Do we need to specify a meeting? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chairman Gunstein. Um, Community Economic Development Committee, Chairman Gansey. Thank you, Mr. President. We have nothing to report tonight. Thank you, Chairman Gansey. Finance Committee, Chairman Laporte. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Nothing to discuss tonight. Thank you, thank Chairman Laporte. License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, under the consent tonight. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Um, Police and Health Committee, Chairman Swanski. Thank you, Mr. President. Item E1 was covered under consent. Thank you, Chairman Swanski. Public Works and Golf Committee, Chairman Danny. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. We had two items on the agenda. F1, F2 were all covered under consent. We have Thank nothing you. else for this evening. Thank you, Chairman Danny. Um, under, any new business that anybody would like to discuss? I've got a question uh, back to the building and zoning. Um, so we're not meeting in August 6th because we've got National night, National night out. So does that mean we have to wait until the third Tuesday to discuss Manny's? It seems like we're losing a lot of time. Can we call a different meeting? We can call a special meeting if we want to, yeah. Let's, let's kind of play it by ear and see where negotiations are at with the attorneys and what the requests are. I think staff's got enough information from the discussion we have about the requests that are being made. Am I correct? Okay. Any other new business? I just want to like clarify that. So is it one non-union? I think what we'd, what we'd like to clarify is all of them, whether they're union or non-union, so we don't have any confusion. Okay. Well, I think we've already established the fact that the foundation could be non-union. Yeah. And that was, we agreed, all of us agreed oh, to that. That was one, yeah. Yeah. I just want a, a nice clean list that says these, these particular contractors are union, these are non-union, so we know what's what. Okay. Um, any other new business anybody would like to discuss? Um, I would like to, at a future committee meeting, uh, discuss how we dispose of um, executive session minutes and recordings, and actually we can extend it into all um, product, work product, that is generated as a village how it's disposed of. So I know just for background for my fellow trustees, I requested the recordings for um, the executive session and it's dealing with site E and a lot of the recordings, which was approved by the board to be um, released, not released, but basically destroyed. Uh, destroyed. That's what it meant. Yeah. yeah. So um, we weren't, I wasn't able to listen to the actual footage you know, audio of it. The one from June that Negative I requested, they still had available, but that was the only one, I guess, because he requested the rest. Yeah, this is something maybe we can Just take review the policy on that? Yeah. Okay. Er, Anything else? Er, could you just um, outline what the um, state requirements are for destruction? Yeah, certainly. So the Open Meetings Act allows any public body to destroy the verbatim recordings of a closed session as long as the closed session is longer than 18 months prior, and we've already approved minutes. So it's pretty routine for public bodies to destroy the verbatim recording once you have minutes and once that meeting's older than 18 months. So that's allowed by state law, and it's pretty much routine for everybody to destroy recordings like that. So that is allowed by state law. What about executive? That's what, that's what it means, closed session, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's because executive sessions are the only ones that are required to have an actual audio recording. I, I, yeah, that's, yeah, thank you for clarifying that, but yeah. I think if it's an ongoing um, 
project currently that we're working on, and now we want to go back. We have a new board. It should be they pulled out. Some context, and now they can't really get that context. Anything that hasn't been finalized, I agree, should be pulled out. I just wanted to clarify that we weren't in violation of the. Yeah, we're not in violation. <laughs> it's just a matter of changing yeah. the policy. And, well, and the minutes are done for beta. There was another executive session. Haven't we had another one within the last six months, other than June, on site E? No, I don't think so. We've had one. Yes, so that would have been within 18 months. You got the recording on that one, though. But there was one before that was that was not older than 18 months. No, there was just one. The previous one was from, I don't have it here. Right, th two years ago? Yeah. All right, good point. Um, anyone else have any new business they'd like to discuss? Any other questions for staff? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, seconded by Trustee Laporte. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Gansey? Yes. Einstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yep. Solansky? Here. Danny? Yes. We are adjourned.